Hello, everybody. How's everybody doing? Let's try that again. How's everybody doing? Is it a nice day out here? Exactly. So nothing better than that. Uh, good afternoon. I am Brian Kenner. I am the Deputy Mayor for Planning and Economic Development, and we are very happy uh, to be here at the war for this very exciting announcement around self-driving technology uh, here in Washington, D.C. Uh, joining us today, uh, we will have the CEO of Ford's Autonomous Vehicles, uh, Sharif Markabi, and members of his team. We will have Damian Rodriguez, who's a student at the D.C. Infrastructure Academy, uh, as well as uh, Mayor Muriel Bowser, who will provide us some thoughts about uh, the importance of this uh, importance of this announcement. Uh, I want to start with just a few thank yous. Uh, thank you to the Deputy Mayor's team. Uh, which has worked uh, tirelessly um, over the last few years, uh, not only being a part of a few global working groups, but also uh, helping to put together the local D.C. working group that has helped to uh, advance autonomous vehicles in the District of Columbia, and that is Andrew Trueblood, Marie Whitaker, Yari Greeny, uh, Kate Hardick, and Jessica Carroll. So thank you all very much for all of your efforts. Uh, also want to say a big thank you to the Department of Employment Services, uh, and their director, uh, Unique Morris Hughes, uh, Tim White, and Vanessa Weatherington, uh, as well as the DC Infrastructure Academy and the Excel Automotive Institute, uh, who are important partners uh, for this Ford announcement. Um, as you can see, uh, not only looking uh, at this uh, wharf development, but really increasingly all around the District of Columbia, uh, we are experiencing really historic and an exciting time. Uh, for Washington, D.C. Uh, and with that uh, additional growth in the District of Columbia comes the need for additional mobility solutions. Um, as the mayor sometimes says, uh, we're not growing any new roads in the District of Columbia, uh, so we have to learn how to use our existing infrastructure even better. And uh, global world-class cities have global world-class mobility solutions, and autonomous vehicles are certainly uh, one of those. Um, I think that we are uniquely positioned uh, to be able to explore driverless cars in particular uh, as they continue to foster an inclusive and a diverse tech ecosystem uh, here in Washington, D.C., and increasingly all over the country. Um, you know, many of the, the uh, advancements that we've made in the District of Columbia have been because we've been willing to try things. Uh, we've been willing to um, consider uh, autonomous vehicles on our sidewalks. Actually, we're the first city in the United States that has been able to have uh, the Starship technology. Has anybody seen Starship rolling down 16th Street or any place else? Uh, we're the first city in the United States that's been able to uh, have autonomous vehicles located on our sidewalks, and I think that's largely because um, we see some of the, uh, the advantages that uh, this new technology can have, uh, not only in our city, but also uh, increasingly for our residents. Um, you know, we are very happy to be able to work with uh, great partners to make sure that programs uh, like autonomous vehicles on our sidewalks, but even autonomous vehicles on our streets uh, take, uh, take root and are able to be successful. And so we're very happy uh, to be able to be here today to uh, talk about uh, the ways that Ford has been uh, an incredible partner for the city uh, and how many other uh, stakeholders in the District of Columbia uh, have also been able to be helpful uh, as we launch this incredible uh, new partnership. Um, none of these things would be possible without the leadership of our mayor. Uh, the mayor has not only uh, challenged us to think about uh, how new technologies can be important to the District of Columbia, but more importantly, frankly, how those, uh, how those technologies can help residents. Uh, she starts from a place of how is this going to be good for the people who live in the District of Columbia. And I think that this unique partnership uh, where we have an opportunity to focus on not just the technology but really the workforce aspect of it, uh, the ability to train D.C. residents for these kinds of jobs in the future, I think is incredibly, uh, incredibly powerful. And so uh, I certainly want to uh, acknowledge and have an opportunity later to hear from uh, our mayor uh, to be able to, to help us think about many of these things. Um, but uh, to start with, I want to ask um, Sharif uh, Markabi, who is the CEO of Ford Autonomous Vehicles, uh, to come up and talk a little bit about the actual program, uh, as well as to introduce how this technology is going to be impacting uh, the streets of Washington, D.C. Sharif. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you, Deputy Mayor Kenner. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. 
Thank you, Mayor Bowser, for inviting us uh, and for being here. Uh, it's great for Ford to begin this work in Washington, D.C. Uh, Mayor Bowser and her team are, are fantastic partners, and uh, we've actually been discussing a lot of what we're planning to do and a lot of things that, that I'm going about to share with you uh, with the mayor and, and her team, and it's been a fantastic partnership. Their MOVE DC transportation plan is a cutting-edge blueprint to, to increase options, ease congestion, and reduce a climate change impact from transportation. And it's one of the benefits of autonomous vehicles to, to do all that. The mayor is making DC a test bed for autonomous and connected vehicles, as uh, Brian mentioned earlier. Aside from the mayor's progressive approach to self-driving, Yesterday, it was announced that D.C. is one of the winning cities for the Bloomberg American City Climate Challenge. A testament to the fantastic. A testament to the mayor's commitment to ambitious climate action and securing a safer and healthier environment and economy for Washington, D.C. With a growing population, diverse neighborhoods, millions of commuters, a large public transportation infrastructure, with buses and metro, and high demand for ride hail and delivery services, DC has a broad array of transportation needs and options. You guys have everything here. People are walking, biking, even hopping on shared scooters. And all of this is causing traffic that roads just were not designed to handle. Ford is here to partner with the city so that transportation services can work even better, providing safer and more equitable and reliable options for the community. So what do we plan to do together? This year and into 2019, we will build the backbone of a self-driving vehicle business in the city. We will develop the technology by mapping and testing in all of DC's eight wards. We will research customer experiences to understand the DC's resident needs. We're not just passing through, we're moving in. We will establish an autonomous vehicle terminal in Ward 5, right here in Washington, DC, that will be the base for, oper for our operations where we develop the vehicle management and house our test fleet, one of which you see right behind me. Our partnership is driven by Ford's fundamental commitment to equity. We will work to serve all, the, all parts of the city, including operations in Ward 7 and 8, to see how we can supplement public transportation. And today, we're also proud to announce that we are partnering with the Mayor's Infrastructure Academy in Ward 8. We want to train DC residents to work in the automotive industry in preparation for the autonomous industry of the future. We're looking to train a roster of vehicle operators who will be responsible for operating and monitoring our test vehicles on public roads through the development process. Additionally, we will work to train residents for auto technician careers through courses developed by Excel Automotive in Ward 7 and Ford's Automotive Career Exploration Program will support from local dealers. Chesapeake Ford Truck, Dark Cars, and Shelly and Sheely Ford of Marlow Heights, who by the way are all here today. Growing local talent is essential to establishing a new self-driving industry in our nation's capital. We view getting the technology right as part of the equation when it comes to successfully introducing these vehicles into our cities. Just as important, however, is building a business that will serve everyone. And that's the goal. Not just vehicles, but creating with the city an ecosystem of self-driving services a platform that will enable local businesses, governments, and nonprofits to move people and goods around Washington, D.C. to be safer, cleaner, more enjoyable, and more reliable for everyone. How are we going to do this? 
Ford is working closely with our partners at Argo AI, artificial intelligence, and our artificial intelligence company and robotics company headquartered in Pittsburgh. With Argo AI, we will be developing the technology similar to how we have been testing in Detroit, Pittsburgh, and Miami. Over the next year, the fleet in Washington, D.C. will grow as we expand areas of testing, including the city's downtown core. And we will be conducting business pilot programs similar to what we've done in Miami with Domino's and Postmates to understand customer experience and design a business model that is profitable and valuable to residents. Of course, our top priority is safety. While the field of self-driving vehicle development may only be a decade old, Ford brings more than a century of experience in vehicle safety. We recently published a matter of trust, a voluntary self-report that details our plans and protocols. Everyone here, by the way, should have one. You're either sitting on it or you have it in your hand. And feel, feel free to take it home, read it, and there will be a test tomorrow. As we work together in the coming years and get this right together for Washington, D.C., we will see enormous public benefits in this area. We will be able to do everything from free curb space to improve traffic flow to provide greater access for underserved citizens especially those who live in, in places where transit, food, jobs, and health care are scarce. We're eager to get started and become a part of this community. I'd like to close with an invitation. Please join us. We're excited to work with businesses, nonprofits, and governments to enhance transportation in our nation's capital. To lift up the communities that need it most, and to make Washington, D.C. a model for the future. With that, I'd like to thank you, and I'd like to turn it over to Mayor Kenner. We'll correct that by saying Deputy Mayor, but that's okay. <laughs> Close, though. I appreciate that. Um, just want to also acknowledge uh, we have two of, I think, the district's most innovative thinkers around mobility. Uh, our DDOT Director Jeff Marushian is here. Uh, as well as Ernest Schrapp, our Department of Four Hire Vehicles director is here as well. So I just want to thank them for very much for joining us. Um, you know, in, in many ways, though, today's announcement is also very much about residents. Uh, it's about D.C. residents. And as technology changes the way that we do business, uh, we must also ensure that residents have the skills that they need to be ready for the jobs, particularly of the future. Uh, that is why I'm very pleased to be able to introduce to you uh, one of the students in the D.C. Infrastructure Academy, uh, Mr. Damian Rodriguez, who can talk to us a little bit more about what this means uh, for him. I know that we've also got some other uh, people, if they can raise their hands, from the Infrastructure Academy as well. If we can give them a round of applause. Thank you all for being here very much. But I'll welcome up uh, Mr. Rodriguez. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Damian Rodriguez, and, it's, and it is a pleasure here representing the, rep the residents of the District of Columbia. I'm honored to share my story and how the D.C. Infrastructure Academy helps residents like me who just want a fair shot at a new career. I served my country in the United States Navy for 22 years. It was a life-changing experience. I met new people, traveled to interesting places, and fought in a war to protect our country's freedom. This time also uh, created challenges for me for I developed PTSD. Even though it was year 2008 when I left the military, this disease was still not fully understood. That made getting jobs difficult. Fast forward to 2018, and I'm excited to share that I'm on a path to stable employment. Yes, ma'am. Because of our mayor's commitment to ensuring all residents can build their pathway to the middle class, or in my case, rebuild their pathway, I am now part of a job training program that is teaching me new skills in the automotive technology. With these skills, I plan to open an auto repair shop and hire residents who have barriers to obtaining employment. Thank you to the team at the DC Infrastructure Academy and their, and their training partner at Excel Automotive Institute for providing me with the skills to be successful in the automotive industry. Thank you, Ford, 
for partnering with our community so that residents can learn this new technology. But most importantly, on behalf of myself, classmates, and instructor, thank you, Mayor Bowser, for creating job opportunities for the district residents. I am now honored to introduce to you our Mayor, Muriel Bowser. Thank you, Mayor. Well, hello, everybody. I am really excited to be here. Let's give Damien a big round of applause and thank him for his service to our nation uh, and for his participation in the DC Infrastructure Academy. Uh, to all of my directors who are here, Ernest and Jeff and Unique Morris Hughes, who hasn't been introduced, who's the director of the district's Department of Employment Services. I'm going to let our three helicopters pass us by. Uh, and let me also thank Deputy Mayor Brian Kenner. Uh, as I was sitting there and listening to Damien uh, as he was standing in front of a Ford, uh, the Ford Motor Company has had over a 100-year history of providing good-paying jobs and providing people pathways to the middle class. And I am really proud now to welcome them to Washington, D.C. Let's give a hand to the Ford, our, our Ford Motor Company, representatives. Uh, and you heard Brian talk about, Brian and Sharif talk about uh, the testing that we're going to be a part of here. Uh, and I don't have to tell anybody seated here that technology is changing the way we live. From the way that we shop, to the way that we travel, um, to the way that we stay connected to, to friends and families, to the way that we find jobs and employment. Uh, and we have to stay focused in our city on how we maintain those technology skills and grow those technology skills right here in D.C. Uh, and we also have to make the best of our transportation infrastructure. Uh, we're, we're kind of a compact city. But we just keep getting more and more and more people, which we love. 900 people move to Washington, D.C. every single day. Businesses are starting and growing. Uh, not every single day, every single month. It seems like it, that many. Uh, and we're proud of that. And businesses are moving to our city uh, as well. Uh, we're also embracing technology and how technology jobs can help transform our economy. Uh, some decades ago, uh, in, in less so now, uh, but our economy has been based on the number of federal jobs that are in our city and our region. Uh, one sector that is not growing in D.C., is the federal government. Uh, so how we are able to attract uh, and keep great businesses that pay great wages is very important to us. Our DC Infrastructure Academy is aimed at doing that. Uh, every opportunity that we have from down here on the wharf to all eight wards of the District of Columbia, we want to make sure that DC residents can be a part of that transformation uh, and a part of that growth uh, in the future that we um, will be able to build here for ourselves. A few years ago, I was thinking that we were getting behind the curve on this autonomous vehicle uh, technology. Uh, and we have been focused on in the last several years at making sure that we had the infrastructure. So we have a working group here in D.C. government, that we had the regulations and the, that our laws would be supportive. Uh, but most importantly, um, that we could track our, our progress uh, and the safety and the benefits to the district. And that's exactly what what this pilot uh, will allow us to do. So it just brings me great pleasure uh, to welcome you all uh, to, uh, to applaud the partnership that you have with our Infrastructure Academy uh, and to continue to, for you to report to us um, how we're doing in DC. Thank you very much. Uh, with that, I think we're going to be able to take a picture really quickly, and and then maybe we will figure out questions. We'll do pictures first. We'll do pictures first. Everybody? Yes, that's good. Everybody. 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 Ever
This way, so I can see you. Could you just tell us like, when we'll see these cars on the street? Sure. What that will look like? How many cars it will be between the DC and everything? Sure. I'm gonna have Deputy McKinner and Deputy Sharif. Why don't you stand by? Yeah. So uh, I think, as they've said before, I think the launch date that they're looking for is 2021. Uh, we feel like that gives us uh, lots, both Ford as well as the city, lots of time to uh, sort of learn about autonomous vehicles even more. Um, I think that, as Shree said earlier, but I'll let him come up and, and talk for a second, that there will be just a few cars that will sort of be in the initial testing phase. Again, in the District of Columbia, we have a requirement right now that there always has to be a person uh, in the vehicle at all times. But I'll let Sharif talk a little bit more about the numbers. Yeah. You're actually going to start seeing uh, a, a few of these cars soon, maybe even now, um, you know, start developing and tuning the technology for Washington, D.C. The first quarter of next year, is when you're going to start seeing the vehicles in autonomous mode with a safety driver, with with a with a, an engineer, and that will be like um, like was said is is it, it's a journey to 2021. 2021 will be the scaled introduction uh, of a true autonomous vehicle with no drivers. But there's so much work that we need to do, and we felt it was very important to come in early, work with the city, work with the mayor, and develop the business as well as tune the technology for the city. 2021 would be level five cars on the street. Level four, which would be in service, but no driver, no nobody in the yeah. And how big is the fleet? How many cars you plan on going out of DC? Initially, initially we have a, a handful of vehicles, as I mentioned. Now, uh, when we talk about scale, we're an automotive company. Scale to us means real scale. So depending on how big the opportunity is for transportation in the city. And we think we picked Washington, D.C., working with the mayor because we think there's a big opportunity here. Then we were talking about hundreds, if not thousands, of vehicles potentially. So there's no limit to how many cars we can have. It's more the city, how it would benefit the city, and also run the business. How many cars are you starting out with? You've got one here. How many? We, we're going to have a handful of cars running around this, five to ten in the beginning. That will be in uh, similar to this vehicle here. Would they have DC license plates? <laughs> I don't know the answer to that one, actually. <laughs> Mayor, I think you wanted the license in the district. Is that correct? Honestly, I hadn't thought about that, but it sounds. No taxation. Yes. I didn't hear it. I mean, I, I don't, I don't, I, honestly, I don't have an answer for you. I hadn't thought about how they were going to be registered and licensed, so I'll check in with my team and we'll get the answer to you, Tom. Thank you very much, yes. Hold on one second for the, all the press questions, then we'll come back to you. Yes. Are you? Yeah. Okay. Uh, let me get Sam and then I'll come um, to you, ma'am, and then to you, sir. Yes. The question is how is it going to work? I mean, you had a situation in Phoenix or one of these cars ran over somebody and killed them. Um, you're, you're, you're talking about Vision Zero tomorrow, uh, basically, and how to cut the number of uh, pedestrian and bicycle scooter deaths in the city. Is that a big, a big concern? And even in three years, cars driving around with no driver? Um, yes, they're all concerns, as I'm sure everybody was concerned when the automobile was introduced, when we had street cars, um, when we test any new transportation. Uh, there's always going to be a concern of how safe it is it can be and how safe it is and how we can make it even safer. Uh, what people don't typically say is, you know, I wish there was a time when there was no 
automobile. Maybe some people say that. Or that there wasn't worldwide uh, air, air travel where we can easily connect to each other. What we know uh, in a city like ours, we're growing and we want to be growing and we need uh, to explore all transportation modes uh, and we need to understand them. And I think that's what this pilot uh, period where they are going around in vehicles and looking at our topography, looking at um, the different structures we have and looking at how people interact with our roadways and vehicles is very important. Um, and I can assure you we're going to be very interested in what the test phase shows to see uh, if it's something that works for our city. Uh, now, it is possible that we'll find that it, it does, it's not a fit with our city, and that's what this, this, this test phase is all about. How much does this car cost? This car costs a lot of money. <laughs> that, that, uh, in seriousness, the sensing that goes on the vehicle uh, is going to be very expensive in the beginning. We're uh, also spending a lot of money developing it because we believe uh, in what the mayor is, is saying. It, it's an investment in the future, and someday we're going to be look back and say, thank goodness we did this. But it is very expensive. How much? I can't talk about exact numbers for the sensor, but it's not surprising that the sensors actually cost more than the car. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma yeah. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. I'll come back. Okay. Okay. Yep. Honey Snyder with Politico. Um, a couple questions. First, I wanted to build off that last question and ask um, whether the tempted crash, the Uber crash, caused you any hesitation with this and how there was a safety driver behind the wheel there, how you'll make sure that something like that doesn't happen. Um, and also just wanted to know if the idea for 2021 is that this would be kind of like a shared ride program, like we know what we're doing, or a taxi yeah. program. Sure. Let me first, as Deputy Mayor and maybe a member of the working group, to talk about um, their discussions around um, the experiences in other cities, and then we'll go back to you about shared ride. Yeah, so, I mean, I, I think like most cities and, and, frankly, like most companies, you know, the, the, the previous accident that happened uh, where a fatality result was, was a serious indication. Um, you know, one of the reasons why autonomous vehicles are even in consideration uh, literally all over the world is that greater than 90 percent of all traffic crashes and fatalities are human-related. Uh, and so the opportunity to reduce uh, fatalities, reduce crashes, is actually the intent uh, of autonomous vehicles. That is not to say that there will not be some instances, but we know uh, that uh, all opportunities to, to take some of the um, uh, more subjective uh, features of these crashes off the roads, I think, is, is in the name of safety probably the best thing uh, that we can be doing. Another thing that we've been doing uh, over the last two years uh, Washington, D.C. has been a part of the uh, Bloomberg Aspen uh, Global Autonomous Vehicle Working Group. So we've had the opportunity to learn from cities all across the world uh, around safety, around efficiency, uh, around inclusiveness, which is something that we in the District of Columbia care a lot about. Uh, but the other thing that we've been doing is most recently for our local working group, uh, in Washington, D.C., we've been able to involve uh, not just our Department of Transportation or our Department of For Hire Vehicles, but also our police department and our fire uh, department, too, who's been, who have been able to advise around many of the safety issues and security issues uh, that we care a lot about. Uh, but maybe I'll have Sharif come up here and just see if there's any other things you all have learned from, uh, from the incident. Yeah, just a comment on that. Uh, sorry. You yeah, okay? Can you hear me okay? Okay, okay. So, so just in addition um, to what Brian mentioned, the, we're an auto company with over 100 years of safety development and scale, and we're taking every experience that we have in that and how we're developing this technology to make sure that it's, it's safe on the road. And you shared some of the statistics. We definitely see a big safety uh, benefit of this technology. But I wanted to address one question earlier about, about cost, and it's not necessarily the cost. I wanted to clarify what we're doing, what we're planning to do with these vehicles. We're planning to provide a service. So these vehicles are not for sale. So there's not going to be a cost someone will pay to get this vehicle. The, the service will be uh, moving people, ride hailing, moving goods, providing transportation uh, access to neighborhoods, and to run 
and develop around the clock, if you will, to provide that service. So the cost will really be more per mile, and we strongly believe that, that this technology provides a lower cost of transportation than most of what people have access to today, as per mile, as per trip, as what we're going to be providing from a service standpoint. Okay. Um, can, can you talk a little bit on the safety question? There's different states, like California has reported requirements about crashes and how much testing is happening and so forth. Um, is there any, going to be any similar uh, reporting regime in D.C.? I'm going to speak to the report required. I will. I'll try. Is that anywhere? Yeah. So um, that's one of the things that our working group is taking up right now, and it's great that we have Ford as sort of our first guinea pig to uh, to be able to talk about the information that we want to, that we want to receive. I mean, I think that uh, Washington, D.C. is one of these rare places, unlike California or some of the other states that are out there. We have a, we are a city, a state, and a county all as one. Uh, and so the, our working group is uh, absolutely inclusive of all of the state-like functions that we have in the District of Columbia, but also our local law enforcement and other, uh, other local functions. And so we're happy uh, that four will be participating in that. Okay, last question. Can you expand on that a little more? Is any of the data mapping that's going on Maybe I'll let Sharif talk about the actual data that they're mapping, but uh, I think that our working group is going through the process now of figuring out exactly what kinds of information we want to capture and then what kinds of information we want to provide to people. But I'll let Sharif talk about the individual. I think the, pr the principle of uh, forward alignment with the city around the benefits uh, and having this working group allows us uh, to have more of these discussions. We're open to having these discussions. Right now we're going to be, uh, when we talk about mapping, just to be clear, the, the autonomous vehicle needs to understand what's fixed, like trees and light poles, from what's moving, and then we'll, we'll use the sensing to continue to see what's around the vehicle so that the vehicle can be safe as it's, as it's riding. So if there's a benefit, and I'm, I'm sure there will be, both ways, understanding uh, the city's infrastructure, the city's challenges, understanding what we need to do. At the same time, in terms of what we're doing, running, and the data that's collected in aggregate, because the data is, is generic. It's like this is trees and these are moving objects. We're open to having those discussions in the working group. There, there's no issue. Mayor, is this exclusive to Ford and uh, Uber? Can someone else come in and do the same thing? Yes. Someone else. It's not. Ex it's not exclusive to Ford. What about you? you talk about infrastructure. Uh, your infrastructure academy. In what way will people in say Ward Eight or be able to work? Well, I think you heard Sharif uh, say that uh, folks will be trained to help with the testing that they will be doing over the next several years and also partner through the Excel Academy on Automotive Repair, um, which is not only important for this project, it's important for the district in general. We, quite frankly, contract out for a lot of our automotive repair for our police cars, for um, our school buses and the like, uh, and they frequently are sitting waiting to be repaired. Uh, so we know that we need more automotive technicians trained right here in D.C. that earn very good wages uh, to work on just the needs of our government, not to mention our private sector partners. I'm sorry. How many workers are we talking about here? For, for two people, two hundred. I don't know what. What, what is the potential there? Uh, with Ford, I think you heard them talk about their testing. Um, phase where they could have up to 10 vehicles out in test mode on uh, the training i think that the the numbers of i don't know if we have a number uh, upper limit let me let me get you um what we have kind of penciled out sam i don't have that number off the top okay thank you everybody